Lord, we just pray that uh, you are in everything we see and everything we seek, and we make you the center of our lives each and every day, Lord. We love you, and we just ask you to open our hearts to your word this morning. Amen. You may have a seat. Well, good morning, Crestview. Great to have you. I'm so glad you guys are here today. Um, hey, Crestview.info. This is a place where you can go to find out anything that's coming up, that's going on. Um, if you are new with us today, there's a connection card there that you can go and fill out. Just slide on um, past those. Get on your phone. You can go past those, um, all the announcements. There's a connection card. It helps us get connected with you. But there's so much you can do there. You can leave a prayer request. You can give online. You can find out about events that are coming up. Um, we don't have like um, a thing where it talks about Zacchaeus. Did anybody meet Zacchaeus on your way in, the donkey? Yeah, he's part of our new greeting team for this morning. If you saw Zach, he's eating all our good grass that's coming in already. Um, she said that he hadn't had green grass yet this, this year. So he was, I watched him walk from his trailer in and he was anxious. To, he could see the green grass coming. So he is going to be part of our kids' um, talk today, the donkey. That's, some of you are like, what are you talking about? You got here too soon. Um, we have a donkey that's out front. Um, that's kind of part of the lesson for today. I'll catch you up on that part here in a little bit. But if you were coming in a little late and you had to park up in the grass, if we ran out of parking spaces, thank you. Well, I'm sorry, and thank you for parking up there. If you chose to do that, I appreciate that as well. Thanks for parking up there and leaving some space um, for others in the parking lot. We're working on it. We've got some plans of how to extend that and what to do um, with our parking. So I'm grateful for that. So we do have some cool things coming up um, with our kids. I think something today for our junior high girls and then some different events coming up for our kids. So look at crestry.info for that. But yesterday, here's a pretty cool thing. Um, Serve Manhattan. This was a pretty fun day. We have some slides, uh, some pictures to show you with that. Um, go ahead there, Bob. Thank you. Um, we went to... Nine different places yesterday to serve. I think we had around um, 150 to 170 people that plugged in and served yesterday. And it was a really fun day to be a part of some different places and serve that way. We went to Ogden Elementary, um, Stony Brook, The Fit Closet, um, Cats Cupboard at K-State. We went to Shepherd's Crossing and Be Able the emergency shelter here in Manhattan, um, we wrote some notes. We had some kids that wrote some notes to fire stations and firemen, and they delivered those around. That was fun um, the, yesterday as well. And the community care ministry in Wamigo. So there were several places that we went to, and um, my role, I took a lot of these pictures, so if they're not very good, that's why. Um, but I got to go around and be a cheerleader to almost everybody, all the groups that were there, and make some connections with all of those places. Um, and I would like to thank as well Janine Oler. Um, she's sitting right up here, by the way. She's not going to like stand up or anything. She's probably even saying, don't mention my name. Janine and Natalie and Drew, um, as part of our staff, they did a lot of work to get this together and work on this. Now, here was our goal. Our goal was to help you grow spiritually because that's a sign of spiritual growth is serving other people. So we had one day where we gathered some information about some different places and said, this is where we can go. But some of you do this naturally. It's just who you are. You serve your neighbors and your friends. You look for these places and things to do. And you can do that. If you want to, give us a call, and we'll make a connection for you to any of these places that we served. And you can step out with a small group of people or your family and do that. It's a sign of you growing in your spiritual life. We did it as a group yesterday, but we'd love for all of you to be able to do that um, and just encourage you to think about others. Think about serving. Um, this was our goal yesterday. It wasn't to wear t-shirts or big signs that say, look how great Crestview is. It was to say, we're, we're just here for you. We're here because this is what Jesus asked us to do, and this is what we want to do, is to serve others. So thank you. From, from me to you, and if you weren't part of yesterday, but you do that, continue to serve others. I think it's good for your own heart, and it's good for the people that you serve. So continue to do that. I appreciate that. Um, this next week, though, here's some big things that are coming up. It's Easter week, and I'm going to talk about the beginning of Easter week today and what this looks like um, for us 
coming up and what Jesus did. We've got a good lesson um, about that today. But this Friday, we're going to have another service here at Crestview. So Friday at 7 o'clock here at Crestview. It's just one service. Um, we, we don't have child care um, Friday night, so it's just in here. But here's the deal. We can't celebrate next Sunday on Easter without Friday. We can't get to Sunday without Friday. We can't talk about the resurrection without talking about the death. And so we will be here talking about that. So it's a pretty somber service. Um, be ready for that. You can bring your kids. It'll be PG-13-ish, younger, PG for sure um, on that. I will make sure that if your kids are here, it won't be anything um, graphic like that, especially this year. So come, we'll have communion at night, and we'll talk about what happened on Friday. Saturday, then, we're going to have an egg hunt, so we'd love you to invite your friends, bring your kids, 9.30 here at Crestview on Saturday morning. Um, it should be pretty nice. Weather's looking pretty good for that. Um, it's still in the morning, so bring some coats um, with your kiddos. And then Sunday morning, we're having three services. Next Sunday, we'll have three services. We're not going to have a sunrise service because right now the sun's coming up about 7.15, and our first service is at 7.30, so we're counting that. As our sunrise service, it'll be in here. If you want to watch the sun come up, which I would encourage you on Easter morning, that's one of the best things to do. Come a little early, step out on our patio. You can watch the sun come up and then come in to our service. All three of them will be the same. And I would encourage you, I, I would encourage you to come early. Um, come to the 730 if you can. That will leave room for others, maybe some friends that you invite or neighborhood friends that don't come often to be here and room for them at 9 and at 10.30. Or I'd encourage this, come at 7.30 and then serve at 9 o'clock. Help us usher people in or greet um, or work with our kiddos at 9 o'clock or 10.30. Next Sunday morning, Easter. All right. Um, oh, by the way, next week we're starting a new series, a new series of sermons next week. So I want to encourage you to invite your friends. We're calling it Living on a Prayer next week. And we're just going to walk through some stories of people in Scripture that that's all they had left was a prayer. That's all they had left in their life. And maybe you've been there yourself before. That's all I got is a prayer. And so we're going we're gonna to talk about that, those situations and what we do in those times. So... Um, here's, here's what I've learned here lately, and especially with maybe a transition from serving into what's going to happen here at Easter. In times of crisis, when our back's against the wall, when there's pressure, when there's frustration in our lives, the important things get recognized. We reprioritize our lives during those time periods and say, what's, what's important? And this is what I'm learning. I, I've learned that when, when your backs are against the wall, when you don't have anything left, family's important. Your health is important. You focus in on those things. Your resources are important. And not resources like, how do I get rich? But resources of, how do I survive? What do I do? Serving becomes one of those. Sometimes you stop looking at yourself and you say, well, how do I reach out? What do I do? And so we've done that. And this is what Jesus does as well. When we take almost everything else away, when there's nothing left, we look at what's important in our lives and how do we get there? Well, today is typically called Palm Sunday or Passion Sunday or the story of the triumphal entry for Jesus into Jerusalem. Um, it's the beginning of Passion Week, the last week of Jesus' life. This is what we celebrate. To me, I call it, I, I say it like this, it's the beginning of the end of the beginning. We're, we're ready and Jesus is ready and he shows us on this day the ultimate act of service. Now, it's strange to think of it this way. He's getting ready to um, give himself up, to die for us. And I think the walking into Jerusalem, as he did here, as he enters Jerusalem, tells a huge story for us in serving. So if you have your Bibles, Luke 19. I'd love for you to turn to Luke 19. Um, if you have your Bibles, your Bible app, if you don't have a, like a real Bible, but you have your phone, you have your Bible app on your phone. I'd encourage you to go there. We use the YouVersion Bible app. You can go to crestview.info slash Bible. Um, Bob, I think we have a slide for that. Um, you can get there or you can find the Bible app. You can search for events. You can go to events um, on that. And we've got an outline with it or go directly there. So Luke 19 is where we're at. Now, all four Gospels tell the story. So I'm going to read it out of Luke or I'm going to tell you the story out of Luke. Um, but all four Gospels tell the story. I would encourage you this week, if you're not on a Bible reading plan, 
for this year, like you don't have a set plan, or even if you do, maybe take a break from that, and this week, go to John. Now, I know I'm in Luke. I'm going to encourage you to read John chapters 12 through 20. The last half of John talks about this last week of Jesus' life, and this is a good time to focus in on that and see that. Maybe watch The Passion of the Christ. I know it's an older movie, but it's still a good after the kids go to bed, watch The Passion of the Christ. Don't watch that one with kids in the room. That's a tough one. Here is Jesus, though, and he is on this week before his death. He is coming into Jerusalem, and he is riding on a donkey. So that's why Zacchaeus the donkey is here today to t- teach the kids this lesson as well. But it's a prophecy from Zechariah in um, chapter 9. So the Old Testament, it talks about this, that the Messiah will ride in on a donkey. Now, it's a representation of something. It means something. A, a military leader would oftentimes ride a donkey. I know that sounds confusing, but when he rides in on a donkey, he is actually showing and teaching us that he is coming as an act of service. It's a sign of service. Jesus is saying, I'm here to serve you. Now, during wartime, a leader, a military leader, will ride in on a white horse, or he'll ride back in on a white horse. And that, that's a sign of victory. That's a sign of, I'm your leader, follow me. We're going into battle. Someday Jesus will ride on a white horse. That day is coming. You can read Revelation about that. He, it will happen. We're going back to the Old Testament, now bringing this into Jesus' time to see him riding in on a donkey. Now, Middle Eastern world, during this time period, a leader, when he rode in on a donkey, um, would, would indicate, like I've said, service, but it's saying, I'm coming in peace. I'm, I'm coming to serve you. I'm coming for you. This is my way of serving you. 1 Kings chapter 1 talks about this as well. When Solomon rode in on the day that he was recognized as the king, he rode in on a donkey. This is now Jesus coming in saying, I am now your new king. And I'm, I'm your king to serve you. I'm here to serve you. It was a prophecy. It was symbolism. And everyone knew what was happening. Everyone understood what this meant when Jesus comes in on a donkey. And for Jesus, it's saying, it's finally here. I can finally tell you who I am. I can finally reveal my my intent on coming for you. I am the Messiah. I am your next king. And some people accepted it, and they worshiped him. Some people did not. Some people didn't like this. Uh, He had been doing healings and miracles. He had been teaching, and some were getting it. And they're saying, oh, Now I understand. Now I understand his teaching and what that was about. Now he's coming in on his donkey. Now it makes sense. And others are saying, now it makes sense, and we don't like it. Now the crowds were huge in Jerusalem during this time period because it was Passover. So to give you this understanding, Jesus is coming into Jerusalem, riding on a donkey. There's lots of people there. There's a huge crowd there, and they start to worship him. The reason they are there is to celebrate the Passover. So it is a time of celebration for the Jewish people in Jerusalem. And they're celebrating an Old Testament thing as well, the the Exodus. When they were slaves under Pharaoh, and Moses comes to free the slaves, God's people, from the slavery from Pharaoh, the plagues that happened through that time period. And what they're celebrating is the very last plague called the Passover. What happened during that time period was on the last plague, they were told that they should go into their homes, make a sacrifice to God, and when they did this, they would take the blood of that sacrifice and put it on the door frame of their house. And anyone that was inside the house that had the blood on the door frame of the house, the spirit would pass over them. The spirit of death would pass over them and would save the people in the house. So they were celebrating. They would say, hey, when this is over, we're going to celebrate. We're going out for chips and salsa. We're going out for Mexican food after this, right? Whatever it takes, we're going to celebrate this. And then they did this every year. This was a celebration for them to say, remember when God saved us. Remember when he passed over the house and God saved us. This is their time of celebration. And now here comes Jesus walking in during their time of celebration for Passover. So I'm I'm telling you that story. I'm going to jump ahead. Luke chapter 19, I'm going to read to you, starting in verse 37. It says, As he was drawing near, already on the way down, the Mount of Olives. So he's 
On the Mount of Olives, there's a valley then in between. He was coming then up into Jerusalem with us. The whole multitude of his disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice. So they were now praising him, singing songs to him. Um, They had palm branches that they were waving. It was a sign of celebration for them. That God with a loud voice, all the mighty works that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. This was the song they were singing. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in his highest. They were excited. Here was their Messiah. They were so ready for him. The crowd was singing like a celebration, like a parade. Jesus was throwing out candy, maybe. I don't know. I'm just guessing. Um, on that, It was like a team running out onto the field or onto the court, and the band is playing, and everybody's getting excited. Well, most were getting excited. Look at verse 39. And some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. Now, why would they say that? I mean, everybody's excited. Who would, who would say, band, band, hey, stop, stop. Hey, quit waving those palm branches. Stop doing that. Why would they do that? Because they weren't ready. These are the people, the religious leaders. They weren't ready. To them, this was blasphemy. They didn't believe that Jesus was the Messiah. And to give someone a parade like this, to worship somebody like this, especially somebody that was trying to fulfill some prophecy, riding in on a donkey, they were saying this cannot be. They weren't ready for it because they had a good system set up. They had their lives all together. The, their backs weren't against the wall. They, they were doing pretty good. They had control of some things. They had a good system set up with the Romans. Even though no one really liked the Romans, the religious leaders were like, hey, we've got some calm and some peace right now. We've got a good thing going. The religious leaders were also saying, I'm doing pretty good. I'm getting pretty rich off of this religion thing and what's happening. They weren't ready for a Messiah. If the Messiah comes, it messes up their whole system. It changes things for them. It would change their lives. Sound familiar? If God really moves into your life, would it it change your life? Would you have to change anything, do anything different? Or can you say, no, I want control of my life. I really don't want God or Jesus telling me anything to do. I want control of my life. And if you really invited him in and followed what he teaches, would it Would it change? Or are you saying, oh, ban, cut it out? Not yet. I'm not not ready to be led by the Messiah yet. I I like what I've got set up. I've got a good thing going right now. So they asked Jesus. They said, teacher, rebuke your disciples. And he answered them. And he said, look, 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 guys. If I tell them to stop worshiping me, if I tell them to be silent, the rocks are going to cry out. The trees are going to sing. Nature is going to give God worship. If there are no parades for Jesus, if there are no crowds cheering for him, if there was no church service this morning, if we weren't here singing and worshiping, something's going to worship. Something, someone, somewhere is going to worship God. That's who he is. That's what he has set up. So Jesus looks at the crowd this way. So notice this. Here he is. He's coming in. They're singing praises to him. He he steps back. He's looking at Jerusalem, and he starts to cry. He weeps over the city. Verse 41, as he drew near, he saw the city, and he wept over it. And this is Jesus and what he said. What that you, even you, had known on this day, the things that make for peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes. For the days will come upon you when your enemies will set up a barricade around you and surround you and hem you in on every side. Your back will be against the wall. You won't know what to do. And they'll tear down the ground, you and your children within. And they will not leave one stone upon another in you because you did not know the time of your visitation. Let's, let's, let's see if we can understand this and unpack this. They had been waiting. They had been waiting for this Messiah, but during their waiting time period, they said, I'm going to get my life figured out. I'm going to get control of everything around me. I'm going to control my own destiny, my own life. And when the Messiah comes, they weren't ready. They said, I'm good. I don't need you. I'm okay. 
I can do this. And to them, then, it felt like it came on quickly. Like, oh, I wasn't expecting him this soon. Now he's here. <gasps> and I'm not ready because I got myself ready for me. This was the first time he rode into town on a donkey. But he promised that he's coming back. He'll be riding a white horse the next time he comes. And I think he's telling us, be ready. Be ready for him. Be watching. Don't be caught off guard. Don't think that you getting your life together and everything in line is a, is a good thing. Let me put it this way as well. Don't be a reactionary worshiper. Like, oh, oh, now he's here. Now I can worship him. Don't wait to worship him. Start now. Start today and continue on today with him. This week, don't let just today and next Sunday be it. Do it later today, tomorrow, Tuesday. We'll see people. You can watch people this week. We'll be reactionary worshipers. They'll just come because it's time for that. I was here at Christmas. I'll come on Easter. Um, by the end of the week, though, this crowd it was the same crowd that was worshiping. They were yelling, crucify him. Because I think they got their lives back together. Everything was in control again. I think it's a fear. It's a fear that I have, not only for my own life, but for yours as well, that when we gain control, when we feel like we're in control again in our lives, we often move on. and We lose sight of what God does for us and who he is in our lives. We forget what's important. We forget how we should prioritize everything. We, we do what is best just for us. Then we get busy again. And then sometimes the pressure in our life gets to us and it refocuses us again. Oh, I should pray about that. I don't know what else to do, so I'm going to pray about it. I don't know where else to go, so I'm going to worship and I'm going to pray. And then we get our lives back together again. And we forget to worship and pray. This, this is what happened after the parade. So after the parade had happened, it was either later that day, Sunday, or Monday, um, the day after today, Jesus goes to church. He goes into the temple. And this is a story about the temple cleansing. It says he cleanses the temple. He doesn't clean it, but he, he, he cleanses it. He rebukes the church. He kicks out people. He says, what are you doing? He flips over tables. That's what it says in scripture. He takes their tables and he flips them over and he kicks people out. And he says, my house should be called the house of prayer. And this is why. This is what was happening. It was Passover. So people were bringing sacrifices into the temple. They were coming from miles around saying, we're here to worship. We're bringing a sacrifice. So they would bring their sacrifice from their farm or wherever they had into the temple on the time of year that they come to celebrate and remember the Passover and the sacrifice. They're bringing a sacrifice. But there would be um, opportunists, religious leaders even, that would set up shop in the lobby of the church. And as people brought their sacrifices, they would look at them and say, that's not good enough. You need to buy one of mine. And they were taking advantage of the people that were coming in, and they were making lots of money for themselves. And they were saying, you, you need to buy mine. Oh, and by the way, it costs a lot <laughs> to buy my dove or to buy my lamb or sheep or whatever it is, goat, that they had that they were selling. You can't use that one. You have to purchase mine. Or people would just say, look, we're going in to worship I'm not even going to take a sacrifice. I'm not even going to take an offering. I'll buy one when I get there. They became lazy. They said, I'm just going to purchase one when I get there. And then they'd walk in the lobby and they'd, they'd purchase one there. The lobby of the church became where people got rich and people got taken advantage of. And Jesus said, not in my house. So he flipped over the tables. He said, this is what it's about. I think it's sometimes the same way Jesus rode into Jerusalem is the same way he rides into my life at times. Same way he rides into your life. He comes in peace. He says, I'm here for you. I'm here to serve you. I'm not here to frustrate you. I'm here to be a help for you. And sometimes he has to turn over the tables in my heart. Things that I have set up. Things that aren't right for me. And it hurts and it's hard and I have to listen to it. 
But I did notice this. We're reading through this passage again this week, thinking about this for this morning. I did notice um, one thing again. When Jesus comes into the temple, he doesn't bring a sacrifice. Everybody else that comes in, they're bringing a sacrifice of some sort. Jesus doesn't. When he comes into the temple, um, especially during celebration time period, you're supposed to bring a sacrifice, but he doesn't bring one. Because he is the sacrifice. He is the one who's coming to give himself up. So when that happens, how do I respond? What do I do with that? What, do, what I'm supposed to do with that is produce fruit. It's to say the fruit of the Spirit then is supposed to come out of me. I don't produce the fruit in order to say, um, can I earn my salvation? Can I bring this? And because of what I bring, then I get something in return. No, because of what he's done, my response is a fruit of the Spirit. Part of the story as well is a fig tree. This happens either on Monday or Tuesday as well. After he comes to the temple, he cleanses it. He walks out. He's hungry. He walks by this fig tree. Um, Matthew 21, it tells a story. If you want to jump over that, the fig tree. There's no fruit on this fig tree. Now, a fig tree is known for figs. It's not known to be a shade tree. And a fig tree with no figs is really a useless tree. <laughs> it's not good. And Jesus looks at this fig tree, and it says he curses it. I don't think he curses at it. He, he curses it and says, what good are you? A fig tree with no figs. And it shrivels up and it dies. I think he looks at us in the same way. If your life isn't producing fruit because of your worship from him, if you're not serving, if you're not worshiping, if you're not producing fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, he's going to look at us and say, then what is it all about? <clears throat> What's important in our lives? When our back's against the wall, we prioritize it well, but when we get our lives together, we say, I don't, I don't need you, God, anymore, and our fruit isn't there. We lose track of it. So I'm going to encourage you this week, don't stop worshiping. Don't stop worshiping. It's the beginning of the end of the beginning. Let's start today worshiping him and not stop. Let's continue on. Let him turn some tables over in your heart. Let him write into your heart this way and let him change you for the better. Don't get comfortable with you controlling your life. Let him do that for you. When your back's against the wall, he, that, that may be right where he wants you. It's not fun and it's not easy, but it might right, be right where he wants you so that you trust him to do that. So as the band makes her way up, I want to encourage you <clears throat> this week. If you're returning in your faith, then let it grow today. If you're, if you're growing in your faith, let it grow today. Let him continue to ride in in your life and, and work on you so that you become a true worshiper of his, not just on a Sunday but all the time. And if you've never chosen him, if you've never let Christ ride into your heart, hey, let's do it. If you've never made that decision to accept him, to believe in him, to make a public confession of faith, to step into the waters of baptistry, of the baptistry of, of baptism, if you haven't taken that step, let's, let's do that. Let him change you in that. I would love to talk to you some more about it. I'd love to walk through that process with you so that you can also be a true worshiper of his. Right now, we're going to prepare our hearts to remember what he did for us. So if you would stand, let's sing together. And as you sing, think about where you're at with him, where your priority is with him. Let's sing.
missions team leader and uh, as we come to a time of this morning of considering our offerings in our communion if you by chance didn't pick up communion cups at the back of the room uh, the cups with the bread in the bottom cup and, and the juice in the top one please feel free to go do that at this point I would like to add my thanks this morning as well to all of you who uh, whose schedules allowed you to serve yesterday uh, in the in the community and um, maybe you served earlier in the week. Maybe you're going to be serving this coming week. I don't know, but thank you uh, for doing that. So as, as we come to this time, as we reflect on the gifts and offerings that we bring, um, whether that be by online or by mail or uh, using the boxes at the back of the worship center here, we're very much aware that we cannot be in all parts of the world to serve face-to-face at one time. And so uh, we here at the Body of Christ at Crestview have chosen to set aside a portion of our gifts um, so that we serve not only locally, such as Be Able and Shepherd's Crossing and MCC and some others, but we also choose to serve globally. And so uh, thank you that through your offerings, uh, you serve, for example, the people of Zimbabwe who come to Mashoko Christian Hospital uh, for treatment. But while they're there, they always hear the gospel message. And in fact, this summer we hoped and are planning towards sending three uh, ladies from Crestview uh, to visit there at, at uh, Mashoko. Thank you also for serving the people of Ukraine through the work that uh, Yvonne and Lucia are doing at Kremenchuk Evangelical Seminary uh, as they train church leaders. And also at this point in the ongoing war, they continue to serve those who are displaced by the war. Uh, thank you for serving the Grahams in Ghana. They... Um, there in West Africa are overseeing a disciple-making movement and also uh, teaching some agricultural methods to farmers, farming God's way uh, in hopes of, of helping the people there increase their crop production and better provide for their families. And, and lastly, I would just mention this morning, this isn't everybody, but I would also mention uh, a new mission partner that we have, the Buncey family uh, in Haiti. Uh, thankfully, they're not in Port-au-Prince, and so uh, appear to be relatively safe at this point. But uh, please pray for them and their family. Uh, we look forward to having them uh, early this summer uh, to meet all of us here at Crestview. So when we think and, and uh, begin talking about serving, uh, Really, as, as Devin mentioned earlier, we really can't help but uh, consider uh, the ultimate servant, Jesus Christ, and his ultimate act of servanthood, uh, laying down his life for another. And that another would be you and me. Uh, in Jesus' own, own words, he said, The Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. The Apostle Peter, writing in his first epistle or his first letter to believers that were scattered throughout Asia Minor, which today is the country of Turkey, he reminded them and us that God in his great mercy has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. 
and a new birth into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. So Peter is reminding them and us today that we need to hang on during the tough times that um, until Jesus comes back. That, uh, and then Peter goes on in that uh, same first chapter of that uh, epistle with a call to us for holy living. He says, So prepare your minds for action and exercise self-control. Put all of your hope in the gracious salvation that will come to you when Jesus Christ is revealed to the world. So you must live as God's obedient children. Don't slip back into your old ways of living to satisfy your own desires. You didn't know any better then. But now you must be holy in everything you do, just as God who chose you is holy. For the scriptures say, you must be holy because I am holy. And remember that the Heavenly Father to whom you pray has no favorites. He will judge or reward you according to what you do. So you must live in reverent fear of him during your time here as temporary residents. For you know that God paid a ransom to save you from the empty life you inherited from your ancestors. And it was not paid with mere gold or silver, which lose their value. It was the precious blood of Christ, the sinless, spotless Lamb of God. God chose him as your ransom long before the world began. But now, in these last days... He has revealed, has, he has been revealed for your sake. Through Christ, you have come to trust in God, and you have placed your faith and hope in God because he raised Christ from the dead and gave him great glory. Let's pray together. Our most gracious and heavenly Father, um, we come just now uh, in faith, we come in hope. We come, Father, in remembrance of the ransom that your son paid for all of us at the cross. And today, uh, in this hour, Father, we remember, as he asked us to, with the taking of the bread and the cup, ever thankful we are, Father, for the ultimate sacrifice that he made, that we might receive uh, forgiveness of our sins, and that we might be able to look forward to a day when he comes again in all his glory, and we might be with him forever. And so we just thank you, Father, and we praise you for the mercy and the grace that you've given to us in your Son. In his name we pray. Amen.
Hi, my name is Stephanie. Uh, before I started going to church and before I started was a Christ follower, I didn't really uh, put myself to in the position to where I really went to church too much. Um, I believed, I've always believed, but I didn't really follow like I should have. I realized years ago that I um, needed to put myself in Christ's hand and kind of just believe more in Him and let Him kind of take, you know, the lead on certain things. Um, just because I was kind of in a point in my life where I more so needed an extra hand in that area. I realized that I needed to be more of a believer. Um, that way I can, you know, show my kids the right way to uh, be and to also make them believers in Christ. Um, I would definitely like to thank, you know, my husband, Paul, you know, for, you know, encouraging me to go to church and more so being there for me to talk to when it came to, you know, having the faith in God and having him, you know, more so kind of control everything. And definitely uh, my kids for having me become a better person, um, better than I was in the past before I had them. Buddy, this is uh, this is my new friend Stephanie and her husband Paul, and uh, they're brand new to this town, and uh, came to uh, came to Crestview, and uh, it was kind of a, a cool situation that I that I met Paul and Stephanie, and uh, uh, they they decided to come here to Crestview, and Stephanie is ready to uh, to take this step in her faith and be baptized, and she's been re ready for a while, and today's the day, and uh, her husband Paul is going to uh, ask her a, a, a question, and he's going to do that baptizing. Do it. Stephanie, do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Christ, the Son of the living God, your Lord and Savior? Pretty awesome stuff. There's really not a better way to end our time together, and that's what we're going to do. We're so glad that you've been with us here today here at Crestview. If you're new with us, you're ready to talk about next steps. Maybe you're ready to, to be baptized yourself. We've got uh, three more happening today, so that's an exciting, exciting day here at Crestview. And uh, we're excited. If you're ready to talk about that, we'd love to chat with you out at the fireside area. We're also looking forward to next week. It's going to be a great Sunday. We can't wait to see you. We'll see you on Friday night for Good Friday, Sunday morning for Easter as we celebrate the resurrection together. Have a great week, everyone. See you next Sunday. Thank you.